continue, brothers and sisters. As I was saying, Anne had dinner with Marilla Cuthbert. Because she had a long journey, she traveled with a ship, on a train, and on a carriage. So Marilla must be sure that Anne went all the way from Nova Scotia, all the way to Green Gables. So she knew that Anne was really hungry. Hungry. She she was served some radish meat and some and some milk. Anne said, oh, "I don't feel like eating right now." Said Anne. I'm in the depths of despair. Okay. And I don't feel like eating if you think I'm really, really hungry, said Anne. Well, you must me. Just drink your milk. Okay, I'll tell you what happens when you're in the depths of despair. <sighs> you will have a big lump on your throat that when you try to eat, you cannot swallow anything because you're in the depths of despair. Marilla, have you ever been in the depths of despair? Hmm, I never, so I can't say. Well, you must have been, haven't you? Matthew said, best put her into bed. Marilla said, good idea. She took Anne into her room and then she said, this was for the boy. This was for the boy, but I think it is for you um, for this day. Anne said, oh, I think I will agree with you. So Marilla said, um, I'll be back in a minute. I'll just get the spare candle and went into the nice soft bed when Marilla came back, she hid herself under the covers. Marilla said, good night. How can you call it a good night if it has been the worst night I ever had? Said Anne. Marilla said, oh. And then she rushed out of the room. Morning at Green Gables. When Anna woke, she saw the beautiful, beautiful tree outside her window. And she said, I shall name this the Snow Queen. Well, hi, Snow Queen. You are beautiful in the spring, but I'm sorry when it becomes winter, you may lose your pretty white blossoms, said Anne. Well, I better go downstairs to have some breakfast. I'm really hungry that night because I was in the depths of this. I think I'll go down. Maybe to find some more names to make. Anne was enjoying a very happy moment, but suddenly she had a very bad moment. And she remembered all about what happened yesterday. Ah, <sighs> never mind, I won't think about it. I shall think about my dear Snow Queen and I will sh and I will try to remember that I'm appreciated here in Green Gables, even though I will be not accepted. 
Well, I will try to make myself think about beautiful things. Well, I can't waste time now. Oh, I forgot. Oh, maybe it's time to do some imagination. Oh, this beautiful white silk blanket can do as a cape. And then Anne did her favorite imagination. She said, I'm Lady Cordelia in this beautiful, beautiful land. Dear Snow Queen, I appreciate your offer. And this white, beautiful blossom I shall cherish. And then, while Anne was getting her favorite part, Marilla opened the door and then Anne said, oh, Marilla, you are here. Yes, Anne, it was time you got dressed. And you're still in your pajamas. Oh, sorry, Marilla. I was just having the most wonderful moment. I imagined I was Lady Cordelia Fitzgerald in a beautiful palace in the whole wild world and whole Prince Edward Island. Oh, stop all of your nonsense and get down to eat breakfast. We'll be right there to meet Mrs. Spencer today. Oh, said Anne. I hope not. I want to stay here at Green Gables. It's the most unromantic thing to go back. Well, you better go, said Marilla with a sigh. Now get dressed and go downstairs. Anne said, well, there's not that much time for the imagination. I hope I won't be returned. I hope Marilla makes up her mind that I could stay. It's gonna be really unromantic to just go back to that ugly, yucky, smelly orphanage again with those bad girls who teases me. I remember that time when I was reading Jane Eyre, that beautiful book I never had a chance to finish that chapter. <sighs> I think this is not very good imagination, I suppose, said Anne with a sigh. <sighs> I think I remember that time when those four bad girls said that I was a squeak freak. And they threw my favorite book, Jane Eyre, into the strawberry pudding. I couldn't help myself but to cry. They left the room, slammed the door, and they pulled my red plates. <sighs> that was a very unromantic time at the orphanage. I think I can never ever forget it. remember that time when they teased me about my red hair, my freckles. I hope everyone in Prince Edward Island is really kind enough to appreciate my ugly freckles and my raw red hair. I think it would be really nice to have a friend who had black raven hair, as black as a dark room, and a very rosy complexion and a very sweet sound voice. It would be so nice to have a blossom friend, but couldn't be possible for a girl named Anne Shirley with ugly red hair and freckles. <sighs> I shouldn't think about this, and I shall go to Mrs. Spencer right now. Anne got dressed with the old dress she wore at the orphanage. Anne went down to breakfast with a beautiful happy space on. Ah, <sighs> said Anne. 
I think this was the most bestest day I ever had at Green Gables. Well, I shouldn't waste time and I should continue eating. While Anne at the, ate at the table, she kept on talking about the orphanage and about her imagination. She said, Marilla said, Stop your nonsense now, Anne, and please get dressed. Well, I'm dressed already, Marilla. So, if you're dressed, please, have, please clean the dishes. Anne agreed. She was silent. It was a very silent meal that day. And the more silent it was, the more embarrassed Marilla was. Matthew was also silent, thinking about what would, what would they do to Anne? Send her back? Or maybe let her stay? Well, whatever happened, well, whatever happens, thought Matthew, he tried to be happy. So when Anne got all the dishes, she remembered her imaginary friend, Katie Maurice. Katie Maurice was a beautiful girl with yellow hair, as blonde as the sunshine, as blonde as the river flows. It had very nice curls on it. And when Anne looked at herself in the cupboard where Mrs. Hammond keeps her books, Anne would stare there. One was smashed and one was whole. And the smashed one was broken because of Mr. Hammond. He got drink drunk and then he smashed it with his bare hands. Anne loved Katie Maurice as she was her friend. She always thought of her and her great imagination. It was so nice that every time Anne would open the cupboard, she would take Katie Maurice out of that ugly cupboard and play with her at the beautiful scarlet garden with lots of roses, daffodils, lilies, and everything they could find. But when she was going to move to the orphanage, she had to say goodbye to Katie Maurice, but she also made another friend, Violetta, which was a nice echo from a large valley from another house she came from before. When Anne would, when it was time when Anne should say goodbye, she said, Goodbye, Violetta! She said that it echoed back with a sad tone coming back to her. And it reached back to her ear saying, Goodbye! Violetta and then Anne was sad to leave Violetta and especially Katie Maurice because she was the most first friend she ever had. She loves her more than Violetta but she also loved Violetta as well and that's how they got to Green Gables and Anne stopped imagining it and she continued using and washing dishes and then, after washing the dishes, Marilla told Anne to go outside and play. Anne was really, really excited. Chapter 5 Anne's History Mrs. Spencer they, after Anne came back to the table sad, Marilla said, Why are you going, dear? If I see the lovely garden, it will spoil such fun. <sighs> it's just even unfair. If I go out and see the beauty, I will love it. And when I go back to Mrs. Spencer, I will miss them all and I'll really cry myself to death. Stop your nonsense now, and let's go to the carriage. Anne sat down in the buggy and waved goodbye to Matthew, Snow Queen, Bonnie, which is the geranium she named, and she was headed 
to Mrs. Spencer's house. Chapter 5, Anne's History And while they were on the way, Anne told Marilla all about her life, and she said, <sighs> Okay, Marilla, since you want to know about my life, she said, Yes, Anne, I want to really know, and please don't use your imagination. But actually, Anne was going to use her imagination. She didn't listen what Marilla had said, and she continued, Well, the place where I lived is where greyhounds raced and trees that fluttered. Anne, I told you not to use your imagination. How dare you? And said, all right, Marilla, calm down. I'm going to start my story. <sighs> I was born two years ago. And I was 11. I was 11 last March. Years ago. 11 years ago and also I was born in a beautiful yellow house with a lot of gardens there we were a bit poor Mrs. Hammond said I was an ugly and red haired freckled girl but my mother thought I was a very beautiful girl my father too my mother was a teacher in a high school, but she quitted being a teacher when she married my father. Quit. Quit. And then, my f and she died of a fever. And my, and after a few months, my father died of a fever too, when I was just three months old. Mrs. Hadman had no choice but, but to adopt me. She adopted me, and that's when I met Katie Maurice and Violetta. After I did met Katie Maurice, it's time to say goodbye, and I met Violetta. And it also was the time to say goodbye, and especially, and that's how I'm here at Green Gables in Avonlea, said Anne with a beautiful smile on her face. Well, that's a nice story, Anne, said Marilla. Actually, Marilla pitied Anne because Anne had no joy in her life at all. <sighs> they reached Mrs. Spencer's house. Anne said, oh, oh no, why am I here? I hope they won't send me back. Please, Marilla, please. And thought in her mind, I know Marilla will say yes. Please, I hope she will say yes. <sighs> they reached the house, Mrs. Spencer. Huh? That's Lily Jones with Jane, her new sister. Lily Jones was only um, was only four years old and she had to be adopted by Mrs. Spencer. Actually, Mrs. Spencer loved her very much because she had nut brown hair and the cutest and sweetest voice. <laughs> Mrs. Spencer treated her like a daughter and now she was a daughter of Mrs. Spencer. Mrs. Spencer said, Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Marla. You're the last folks I've been looking for. Well, we don't need this girl. It was an accident. <sighs> and just tell us about it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Marilla, but the messenger had said that you wanted a girl and not a boy. Well, I could have sworn I could have said that said Marilla. Oh, you're in luck. Mrs. Blewett asked for a girl about 11 to treat her. She's a big family. 
and Anne will be the perfect girl. She had a lot of experience with that. Anne stared. Thinking about the bad things in her mind and she made up her mind. I remember what I said to Marilla. I only think about the drive and not about go being sent back to the orphanage. <sighs> Mrs. Bullets came in. She said, Huh, mm, you must be Anne of Green Gables, said Mrs. Blewett with a, oh, with a wretched voice. She had a crooked back and a weird face and she had white hair tied like a bun like Marilla's. Hmm, you look a bit thin. I heard that you have a lot of experience. You wear that skimpy dress of yours. I'm not gonna knit you any of those dresses. That is perfect. You use your nightgown at night and you should do what you are told. Anne was scared. She tried to think of happy things, but at last it failed because of Mrs. Blewett's horrid speech. Hm. I think you'll be the perfect girl. You look talkative, but you're wiry. Wiry means tough, so Anne thought she was not wiry at all. She wasn't ever tough. Hmm, I'll take her, Miss Spencer. I'll pay for it. Mrs. Booth was going to say, well, Marilla said, well, we didn't make up our minds yet that we could keep her. We'll just stay her in Green Gables for a while, and then we'll give her to you, Mrs. Blewett. Hmm, we'll get back my money, Mrs. Spencer. I will pay to you after Marilla agrees. Well now, you red-haired, freckled girl, you will be returning to Green Gables with Marilla Cuthbert. And when she makes up your mind, you are with me. Anne was frightened. She rushed out of the room, bring Marilla in her hand, and she said, we must go to the carriage now. No time to explain. And Marla, I'm really happy. Are you going to keep me or did I just imagine that you did? Anne was flowing with overjoy and she said, Ah, oh, it isn't a dream after all. Marla's gonna keep me. Well, I didn't say that. I said I would keep you. But I wouldn't keep you if I made up my mind. Oh, all right then, Marilla, I'll go. They sat in the couch. And then Anne said, Oh, Marilla, 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 I'd rather go to the orphanage than to stay with Mrs. Blewett. She looks like... Uh, a wretched old rubber band. A wretched old rubber band. Marilla thought in her mind about Mrs. Blewett. Stretched and the music and moved back like this. And then Marilla tried not to laugh and she said, Well, and I will try to think over it. I'll make up my mind. Me and Matthew will think to keep you or not. <laughs> Marilla chuckled each when they went to Green Gables. She couldn't stop thinking about Mrs. Blewett being like a rubber band. That is so weird. She couldn't stop. She didn't explain it to Matthew and she said, well, let's We'll keep her or not. Chapter 6. Clara makes up her mind. Goodbye, everybody. See you in the next episode. I love you.